Hello, it's David here again, this time reviewing Alien 3 for the Sega Mega Drive slash Genesis. Now, I know I say this in every rev uh, review of a game that's based on a film, but that's only because it's true. I'm a massive fan of uh, the Alien films, <clears throat> and uh, you know, if you're a massive fan of the Alien films, you'll probably have the Alien Quadrilogy box set. Now, the reason I was most excited about this when it first came out was the Alien 3 assembly cut, because I've got to say, and this may be controversial, but Alien 3 is my favourite of all the Alien films. In fact, not only is it my favourite of all the Alien films, but it's one of my favourite films of all time. I just love the dark tone to it, I love the grit to it, you know. And, and it was a perfect end to the trilogy as well. I mean, Alien, obviously, is a classic horror film. you got Aliens, it's a, again, it's a masterpiece. You know, it's all-out action. And, you know, I'm not really a, a massive fan of just guns and explosions, but Alien 3 really just perfected the trilogy. Then, of course, Alien Resurrection came along and absolutely ruined it, and I, I cannot put into words how much I despise Alien Resurrection. I mean, I even prefer Alien vs Predator to Alien Resurrection. I hate it that much. It just took everything <clears throat> that was so good about the original trilogy and just ruined it. It was like some joke version of Aliens and it also took away the great sacrifice that Ripley made at the end of Alien 3. It was just diabolical. I loathed it. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, today we're reviewing Alien 3 for the Mega Drive. Now, Alien 3, the game, was released across a lot of formats. The only one that was really drastically different was for the Super Nintendo, and I will be reviewing that as well, because I've got that, and uh, it's a really good game. So I'll be reviewing that at a later date. But for now, we'll have a look at the Mega Drive one. Now, I've got to say, just just because you may have played, say, Alien 3 on the Nintendo, which is, has the same idea behind it as Alien 3 on the Mega Drive, doesn't mean the quality is the same. The quality actually differed drastically from format to format. So... Here's my review of Alien 3 for the Sega Mega Drive slash Genesis. Let's see how good this really is. Okay, so here we are with the opening. And it's interesting that it begins with, with uh, an egg with uh, light shining out of it, because that, that egg was actually used in the original uh, teaser trailer for Alien 3. And it said, uh, Alien 3, on Earth, everyone can hear you scream. But of course that never came to pass. And uh, if you know the, the troubled production of Alien 3. If you know about that, then you understand why. Anyway, first of all, as usual, let's have a look at the options. Now, you can get up to 9 lives in this. You may think that's excessive, but if you've never played this game before, then you'll need every single last one of them. Difficulty, easy, normal, or hard, and they do make a massive difference. You can change the controls, and you can listen to the music and sound effects. Now, the music doesn't try to replicate the excellent score that was in the film, but it's still brilliant anyway. I actually love the music in this game, so let's get started. Okay, now stage one it says mission. Now that actually does mean something, and I'll get to that a bit later on. Okay, so the game opens up. Now the controls are fine, you know, very responsive. Now, as you can see, I'm using a machine gun here. You press A to change your weapon. Now the machine gun, you can run and fire with it, as you can see. Just blew away an alien. There's also the flamethrower, which I just picked up ammo for. Now you can't uh, move while using the flamethrower, that's fine. I uh, picked up machine gun, ammo, machine gun ammo there, and there's ammo for my grenade launcher, which, you know, is a bit delayed when you fire, so you've got to be careful when you use it. Now you'll see in the top right I've got a radar which is flashing. That means it's about to disappear. Thankfully, you can pick up more radar. Presumably that's battery or something. You've also got these grenades, but they don't explode on impact, so basically you're going to have to be a good judge to hit anything with it. Uh, basically, they're a last resort weapon. Now, you're going to see a lot of these platforms throughout the game, um, but you know there's no real annoying jumping sections in this. There's more ammo for my machine gun. Now, there's some health. You can see my health bars in the bottom right-hand corner. Now, you'll see the timer in the top middle of the screen, and below that there's a number. That's the number of prisoners in this level. And I've got to rescue all those prisoners before the timer runs out. And if I don't, I fail. As you can see, the aliens uh, could be anywhere and they run at you quite fast. Now, there's these doors uh, you might have to open, or you can use your grenades to blow them to pieces. Now, going back to the aliens a second, you'll see they are very much like the ones that were in, well, the one that was in Alien 3, which I like, because I love that style of alien, you know, the really fast, moving alien. Not too fond of the warrior aliens from Aliens. Now, there are a lot of vent sections in this game, which is appropriate for an alien game. The levels are essentially mazes, with prisoners scattered about, and they get more and more complex as the game goes on. 
and there are four different types of environment you'll find yourself in, and although the differences between them are only superficial, it does help keep things fresh. Now once you become experienced at this game, you'll rely more and more on your radar. The aliens show up as blue dots, and the prisoners show up as red dots, and the radar becomes an invaluable device. I mean, when you first start off, you'll play this like a straight up platform game, but you can't go on like that. Now here's an interesting thing, there are certain walls that you can jump into and usually there'll be items in there like health or ammo or whatever and at first you'll think they're just secrets but actually you'll need to discover these walls later on in the game if you want to get past certain levels. Earlier I mentioned that the word mission at the beginning of the level actually meant something it's because there are different types of level, for example this one's called rescue and there are no aliens, there's just lots and lots of prisoners and you've got to, again, rescue them all and get out in time. There are also mayhem levels in which there's no prisoners, just lots and lots of aliens and you've got to get out. And as we see here, the obligatory boss levels. Now, I don't know what kind of aliens these are, I've never seen them in anything before. But you know, alien games, uh, even the modern ones like Alien vs Predator 2, they tend to uh, add their own xenomorphs in, and that's fine. Now these bosses follow a set pattern like in most retro games and it's basically a case of learning it to defeat them. There are a lot of levels in this game, so many that I've never bothered trying to count them. I mean, it just does seem to go on and on. Um, but it's a great game actually. You know, it may sound uh, repetitive, but the action is so intense, the aliens are so fast, you're always, you're always on a hair trigger keeping an eye on the radar, you know, one could fall down in the ceiling, one could uh, run from the side of the screen, it's really, really fun to play, and it's exactly what an alien game should feel like. And think about it, you know, what else could they do with these, uh, in these retro games? This is the best they could do in the day, and uh, I think it's absolutely brilliant, and I still enjoy playing it. I mean, even just reviewing it right now, I actually want to go and play it. Now a fan of the film might ask why Ripley's running around with all these guns when there was no guns in the film. Uh, and of course there was only one alien in the film, so why is there lots and lots of aliens? Well if you think about it, how could they possibly, especially back in these days, you know, how could they make a game with one alien and no weapons and still make it fun to play? It just wouldn't be possible. But you know, <laughs> Ripley's still got her shaved head, you've still got the, the bald prisoners. You know, I think it does... I wouldn't say it captures the spirit of the film as such, because the uh, the tone of the film is very grim and dark, and the music to this kind of gives it a, a jumpy, high action feel. But it's still a brilliant game, regardless of that. It's very rare that I like a game that is based on a film, but doesn't really feel like it. You know, this game is actually quite hardcore as well. If you're going to play through it, you'll need a good afternoon free and lots of perseverance, especially on hard. So there we have it, a good game for a great film, 8 out of 10. You know, it's kind of ironic that the production of this uh, review has uh, been very troubled, because the production of the film is also extremely troubled. And you know, I think I know exactly how both David Fincher and Ripley in the film felt like, because I'm absolutely knackered and just drained generally. You know, it's been a very busy time in real life, etc. And this is my first review in a week, and I've had all kinds of problems with the software. Uh, it's just been an absolute nightmare, but I hope it didn't show in the review at all. Um, and I'll be back soon with a review of Indiana Jones and the Emperor's Tomb on the PC. So that's it for now. Thank you for listening. This is David, last surviving member of the Nostromo, signing off.